Hey fellas, me Trapper here. Well, recently my buddy, Chris, the wooded beardsman up in Canada, released a snaring video where he was snaring uh, rabbits, um, snowshoe hare. And that was one of the most educational videos I think I have seen in a long, long time, especially concerning snaring. The interesting thing is, he didn't catch a single rabbit. And that's precisely why it's such a great educational tool. He's got some awesome game camera footage, and he has uh, contacted me for a video response and uh, shared some of his footage with me. So let's take a look at what he was doing and how the rabbits were being missed by the snares. And then what I'd like to do is share my input. Now, I'm not in northern Canada. Uh, I don't operate in the snow, so I can't comment on all of that. But what I can tell you is how, to, how I set a rabbit snare and what I think is important in that process. So let's go take a look. Okay, before we get started, one quick legal note. The area where this video was shot, it is required by law that they use brass wire for their snares. They cannot legally use aircraft cable snares. Also, the size of the loop is limited to four inches. Um, I think that's small for the type of animal that they're going after, but it is possible to catch them. These are just silly regulations in my opinion, but it's none of my concern. It is what it is. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, now what we have here is a very well-defined rabbit trail through the snow, and we have a homemade picture wire snare hung in the trail. So let's take a look and let's see what happens. Now what we have here is a couple of very, very serious and very common errors when it comes to snaring. The first error is you're going to notice how the snare is hung vertically. Notice how it's hanging straight down from the branch uh, over the trail with the open loop directly in the trail. This is incorrect. The next thing that you'll notice about this video, notice how the snare swung wildly back and forth. When the rabbit hit it, it was not solidly anchored or solidly supported. This is the single most glaring mistake made in this particular set. The snare has to be absolutely rock solid. When the snare is set properly, the only thing that will move at all is the loop when the animal enters the loop. Nothing else can move. And if you'll watch this video, you'll see how this loop just swings about wildly. It's just flailing about because it has absolutely no solid support whatsoever. So we have two primary and glaring mistakes here. Number one is the snare is hung vertically, and number two, it's not supported properly. So now, let me tell you and let me show you how I would go about setting a rabbit snare in a game trail. Also, notice these rabbits know that snare is there. You're not going to hide that snare from them. They know it's there, they can see it, they can tell it's there and they're either going to make a choice to go through it or go over it or go around it. You're not going to fool the animal. So you have to make the opening inviting and then you have to set it properly. So let's take a look at how I would set this situation up. Now briefly I'd like to explain why you don't see me snaring rabbits on my channel. Quite honestly I simply got tired of feeding the coyotes, the foxes, the raccoons, the hawks, and the owls. The majority of the time when I would snare a rabbit by the time I got to it in the morning, 
something else had already found it and had already eaten it. Now this is not that big of a problem where this video was shot, but it's a very big problem where I live and that's why you don't see me doing this on a regular basis. All right, we're going to assume that this is our rabbit trail right through here. And you can see I've got a little tree that I'm going to anchor off of. Now it doesn't have to be big and strong because we're not snaring uh, wild hogs, we're snaring rabbits. Now, I'm going to take my snare and go ahead and uncoil it. And the first thing that you're going to notice is that this is a modern aircraft cable snare. This is not some kind of a piece of wire. If you want to know my thoughts on wire snares, you can go to my video, uh, I think it's called An Open Letter to Primitive Trappers. Now, this is a 1x19 twist, 1 16th inch diameter cable. Uh, this works just fine for rabbits. You can also go a little bit lower in diameter. You can go down to a 3 64th inch cable and works just as well. Um, the reason I don't use 3 64 that often is it's just another thing to add to my inventory, uh, another size uh, locks and hardware and, and all of that. So you can see this is not a very long snare. Um, this is probably, I don't know, 36 inches long or so. I've got a good swivel. I always like swivels no matter what. And the first thing I'm going to do, and this is sort of my system, is always anchor, anchor your snare, okay? You'd be surprised how many times or how easy it is to forget to tie your snare off. Now if I were snaring anything other than rabbits, I would use a double wrap of wire um, because a single wrap is, is not going to hold very well. But like I say, we're uh, not snaring hogs, we're snaring rabbits. The next thing I'm going to do is I've got to support this snare in the trail. Okay, you got to have something that will hold that snare in position. I like a number nine wire. A number nine wire is very stiff. It's very solid. Okay. I use these uh, pre-made pre supports. You can find them on my channel. Uh, it's just basically a 3 8 inch electric fence post um, with the wire pre-installed. Now, down here, you can see I can just shove that down into the ground, and I've got a ready-made snare support. Now, I understand when you're up in the um, up north, You've got frozen ground, so I'm going to show you a, a different method of supporting the snare in just a few minutes. But this is what I use down here. And of course we have our plastic support collar, vinyl tubing. That simply fits on there like that. And at this point, I can position this snare wherever I want in this trail exactly like I want it. Just like that. All right, now here's the finished set. You can see I've got my snare wired to the tree. I have my snare support with my number nine wire, and that's what supports the snare through the plastic tubing there. And there's my snare itself. Now, this loop is about a five and a half inch diameter loop. You can see there is my outstretched hand. You just have to measure your hand and figure it out. But you guys, snowshoe hares up there, are bigger than our little uh, cottontail rabbits. But you can see, and at least I hope you can see that showing up on camera, that's what you want right there. About a five, five and a half inch loop, just an um, inch and a half, two inches off the ground or off the walking surface because up there your walking surface is going to be snow. Now here's a couple of tips, and this is the important thing. You'll notice how my snare lock and my snare support are not vertical. They're not on top of the snare. They're at about the two o'clock position. You want it at about the 10 o'clock or the two o'clock position, okay? You don't want the thing hanging down um, directly from above. The reason for that, and this is important, and this is why I think those misses are occurring, the only thing that should move on your snare is the loop itself once the animal hits it. Let me repeat that. The only thing that should move on your snare is the loop itself once the animal hits it. That's why I'm a 
such a big fan of the number nine wire because it's a very thick, very solid support wire. You can see how I have that coming down and then angling up to the two o'clock position right there. Now, this, when the animal hits this, you can see, I want you to watch this. None of this is, none of this is moving, nothing's dangling or flopping. The only thing that's moving, see how that's still over there? And that's under, that's under tension, that's under pressure. See, that's, that's not moving. My support's not moving, all of that. And he's caught, okay? That, that's the important part. This has to be solid, has to be rock solid. Now you can see, the importance of that being solid. See, if something hits this, either way, goes over the top or what have you. See, that's taking a lot of abuse. The lock is still set. The snare is still operational. It's still, it's still ready to catch. You've got to actually get in it and knock it down like that. You've got to work at it to get this thing to where it's not going to make a catch. All right, so... If you're in frozen ground and you can't just stick a support in or um, number nine wire is not practical or you don't have it, what I'm going to do is show you a, a different method here. What this is, is this is 14 gauge tie wire. I've stripped off about six feet and I've formed it over into a U and, um, and wrapped it around itself. Just twisted it together so that I now have a three foot section of wire that's been twisted together. This is designed to give it a little more stiffness. I'm going to use this three foot piece of wire as my snare anchor and support all in one. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pass one end of it through the swivel. You can see like that. And I'm going to use this and anchor to the tree. There we go. You can see that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to twist this together again. Just like that. Now, you can see this is going to anchor my snare and serve as my snare support all in one. See how I wrap that around? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this up. Let me get that straight, bend that down. There we go. You can let me give you a close up shot of that. Something about like that. Now I'm going to weave the snare through here. Let me show you how that looks. Let's see if I can get that to focus. You can see how the snare is woven back and forth through there. And what that does, that applies tension and holds that snare up so that I can set the loop and then I can bend this up or down until I get that snare exactly where I want it. Very simple, very easy, very cheap. The same wire is anchoring the snare right there and supporting the snare. So with this method I've got my snare and about six feet um, of wire, of cheap wire. And the end result is the same in that, uh, you hear that owl, it's getting dark. But when the animal hits this, you can see that support is still pretty stiff and it's gonna pull like that. In my opinion, this is not as stable and sturdy as that nine gauge, but sometimes you gotta go with what you got and there's more than one way 
to skin a cat. Well, I hope that was useful. The most important takeaway should be that your snare has to be supported properly and solidly. Stability is the key. The only thing that should move is the loop when the animal enters the snare, nothing else. That's far more important, in my opinion, than whether you have a four inch loop or a five inch loop, whether it's one and a half inches off the ground or two and a half inches off the ground. All of that stuff is secondary. You can see from the footage that the rabbit knows the snare's there. Uh, you're not gonna hide that from them. They're either gonna make a decision to either go through it or to go around it. And once that decision is made, the next thing is, is your snare gonna wobble out of the way? Is it gonna get knocked down? Or is it gonna catch the animal? On that point, make sure you don't over fence your snares. That's the second most common mistake that people make. They think they have to build a Taj Mahal where the only possible way through is to go through the snare. Now they'll just go around it, go over it, or they'll turn around and go back the other way. Uh, you can fence subtly, but you don't have to try and force the animal through the snare. There's plenty of woods out there and plenty of other places for that animal to go. So just sort of gently guide them uh, into the snare. And if you are gonna fence, don't fence right up next to the snare. Build sort of a, a V-shaped funnel as you're going away from the set to sort of gently guide them over time. You don't wanna just have this impenetrable wall with a hole through it, okay? You wanna sort of nudge them in the right direction over time, over several feet. So keep that in mind as well. But anyway, I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. Uh, great channel, Chris. Love your videos, and that is some great footage you got. Awesome job, dude. We'll see you next time.